Hey guys, Sakog here. Oh, actually, I'm not supposed to say Sakog because apparently people have been uh, mishearing how to pronounce the abbreviation of my name, so I'm just gonna simply uh, just call myself Sir Kirk from now on. So, yeah. Hey guys, Sir Kirk here with my How to Use a Zwei Honda in Real Life uh, movie video, whatever this is called. So, you know, just as a future update, I'm probably going to start branching off of the souls games for a bit i mean i do like the swords and the weapons and stuff but i want to give other games some love so spread the avenue of what i do but i mean thinking about all this i mean the weapons that i have done the zweihander the claymore and the bastard sword i mean i feel the most comfortable with just those weapons i mean that's what i do in real life that's what i practice with so i'm happy there i mean sure you can say oh well why don't you do the long sword video i mean long sword and dark souls is nothing like it is in real life it's just it's more of an arming sword than an actual long sword but i digress everything that i would really put in the how to use a long sword video is really in the bastard sword video so check that out if you want to see more on that but with this video with the zweihander i mean whew, i love this weapon well more so in real life than in dark souls uh, and i'll get to that why i like it more in real life than in dark souls but this weapon is just an elegant beast. It's just, oof, just makes me feel happy. Like, it's, it's just the weapon that I would feel most comfortable using if I just were to walk into a battlefield. I mean, this is something that you would inspire fear. Like, people look at you and be like, okay, yeah, no, I don't want to mess with that guy. Uh, but, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. Again, like I said, this is probably going to be the last video I make in regards to Dark Souls. But, I mean, I wanted to end... These, this series at least with a bang so uh, I, I'm glad I chose this weapon to do my final video on so yeah I mean the only issue I kind of have right now is uh, spoiler alert the weapon that you see in Dark Souls is uh, actually not a uh, Zweihander it's actually a Montante which is like the Spanish Portuguese equivalent of this weapon and you can basically tell by looking at the parry hooks above the handle. So with the Montante, they come out more of a cross shape, while with the Zweihander, they're more of um, a crescent. But also, as a bonus, let's talk about the Flamberge. That's uh, a misnomer also as well. They're actually called um, Flamenschwert, something like that. But Flamberg was actually um, related to fencing types of swords so like um rapiers and stuff that had the flaming blade but you know that's not the proper term for the great sword sadly but you know i'm including this sword in there because the zweihander and the flammenschwert it's they're like in the same class of swords so yeah i mean you know a lot of stuff i'll be using i'll be using on both of these so yeah let's have fun with this video here now as i said earlier I mean, while I do like the quote-unquote Zweihander in the Dark Souls series, um, there are really key big issues I have with it. I mean, besides the fact that, you know, it's technically more of a montante, but, you know, besides that fact, and besides the fact that, you know, the Flamberge is actually not a Flam... Well, whatever, but just, you know, ignoring the misnomers and stuff like that, the biggest issue that I have with the presentation of these types of weapons in the Dark Souls series is the way that the characters wield them would suggest that they're not very familiar with using these types of weapons. Like, the player character uses them in a way that is just very unrealistic and very uncoordinated. It's as if, you know, you just basically just gave a toddler a stick and they're just wildly swinging it. And, I mean, there's just so much wrong with it. I mean... The player character overswings these weapons like massively. Like really all you have to do is wait for them to swing and then punish them. And funnily enough, when you talk about like the PvP of these games, it's hilarious that usually people punish ultra great swords as they're called because, you know, they just take so long to swing and people can backstab or just punish in between swings. So I mean, if someone were to try to do that in real life, that's what exactly what um, you should be expected to do, because there's no reason why you should be swinging like this, all wide and open, and just, it's just, oh my goodness, and to add icing on the cake, which is how these weapons swing in the Souls game, I mean, why in the world are you slamming these weapons on the ground? I mean, 
with the amount of weight and the amount of force you're putting into it, you're going to blunt the edge and severely damage the blade and the weapon. And I mean, it's just, there's no reason. I mean, sure. If we have these weapons are, you know, a bit heavier and a bit more, you know, I would say unwieldy. I mean, they're not really unwieldy, but they're a bit heavier than like some of the traditional, like other weapons you see in the soul scene. But it doesn't mean that they were so heavy to the point where, you know, you'd slam them on the ground Granted, I mean, I would understand maybe for, like, those giant slabs of uh, rock and metal that you can see in some of the games. But with Zweihanders, I mean, they, they really aren't all that heavy. So there's no reason to be slamming them like this. And also, um, another thing is, I mean, while you can see some Zweihanders um, this size that you see in the Souls games in real life used in combat... More or less, when they get to this size, they were, um, they were more used for either recreation or for like parades and celebration. I mean, yeah, you could see them on the battlefield, but towards like the later half, you know, of the 16th century, they basically kind of just became more or less ceremonious uh, decorations and stuff. So, I mean, it's not really a problem per se, but it's just you know something that I've noted. And, I mean, really, it's, that, I mean, you know, when trying to make a realistic interpretation of the moves in this game, it's going to be kind of hard. I mean, not because I don't know how to use it, but more or less because it's really hard to reinterpret just a very ineffective way to using uh, these weapons. I mean, at least with the other standard great swords, at least they had a lot more merit to them. But with how ultra great swords are used in Dark Souls, uh, there's not too much merit I can bring out of it but the rolling attack that move i mean it's decently solid i mean there's not really thing not the not really anything too wrong with it so uh the roll the rolling thrust attack I, I give that a pass and of course i mean despite the fact i'm going over the move set here i i'm not doing any one-handed attacks because why in the world would you use this one-handed is no just don't i'm just only doing two-handed stuff because no <laughs> I, I can barely hold this weapon with one hand, so I don't know why I would, uh, you know, do that in real life. So, no, we're just doing it two-handed. But, you know, in the Souls game, you don't really see half-sorting or murder strokes or anything cool like that. So, I'm also going to include some of these techniques that you can use with these weapons in this video. So, expect to see that. But, yeah. Oof. It's kind of it's kind of sad just you know doing this because you just feel so awkward and you feel like oh man I'm just doing all this wrong like I'm so unbalanced I, ugh ugh I just feel so I just feel so bad doing the Dark Souls uh, let me let me just ugh when it comes to the history of these types of swords they're basically the evolution or the extension of the long swords and previous types of swords and they basically have a lot of added features like for my weapons at least not in the dark souls per se they have um rings that help you know extenuate the cross guard so you have much more protection on your hands i mean this is not a requirement for these swords to have this feature but it's definitely something that i like to have on mine because i just feel much more protected also, as was said, you, the little parry hooks that you see, that's also something that, well, some long swords do have things that are very small and kind of similar to help with protection, but it's much more apparent when it comes to the later swords of the time, as well as the fact that great swords like these, they're usually bigger than long swords and a bit heavier. I mean, they can be around the same size, but I mean, yeah, there's variations, but usually they were much longer and Despite being swords, really interesting enough, they were actually used more like a halberd than just like a sword. So it's kind of like a combo, but some of the ways you would use it, you would use it more so with a polearm and things like that. But um, yeah, I'll admit that I'm not really uh, the best at great sword combat. I mean, I know a little bit about it based on what I've seen in manuals and what I've seen through real life examples, but I feel like my expertise is in the longsword, 
So sorry if I really don't offer too much commentary on how to really use it. Um, I do put annotations in uh, what I do so you can kind of follow it, but a lot of the things that I do are kind of repeats of ideas and concepts that I say in other videos. So for example, you know, whenever you take a strike, you need to be able to be in a position where you can retreat or advance and also be able to guard from oncoming attacks or just anything that the opponent can throw at you versus how in like Souls games or in most fighting games in general, you basically just throw yourself out there and leave yourself wide open for counterattacks. So, I mean, you know, I go into more in depth about the different stances and other things to consider, but I mean, it's not really too much I can say. I'm not really a huge expert, so it's not like I can make like a definitive like, yeah, this is what you have to do and this is what you need to do. This is more or less just um, me practicing with these weapons how I think or how I envision you would use them. I mean, you know, there is some help that I had from other people at my HEMA gym that can kind of help show me some of these basic techniques and ideas, but this is more so just me just applying what I know and just finessing in how I see fit. I mean, if you guys want to see me do fights as well as, like, do some more practice stuff, I can also post those types of videos. But, you know, I mean, here was just really myself just doing this type of thing, but hey, I, I really like handling these weapons, but I mean, whew, it can be pretty tiring because unlike long swords, these guys are, you know, I mean, they're not too heavy, but they're weighty enough to where you feel like, okay, if I just like work out for like 30 minutes or an hour, like you're going to be really tired. And I can't imagine how people back in the day, um, you know, fought in armor. I mean, sure, they probably had, like, rotations and stuff, because I wouldn't imagine just fighting for a really long time in heavy armor with these weapons. And granted, you know, people were trained, and people were accustomed to those types of conditions, so that definitely helps. But, yeah, even with this, I'm pretty sure people weren't in, like, prolonged combat for a huge amount of time. I'm pretty sure, like, oh my goodness, you would need... uh you know, people to kind of switch in, like, have your tag team bunnies and stuff, but I do want to study more of, like, the historical, like, battlefield tactics, like, I know some of it, but it's not my expert, like, I'm, I'm more into, like, the dueling aspects, but I think also understanding the historical contexts and trying to figure out how, like, battlefield tactics work, I think that definitely might help with my understanding with these weapons as well, so... I'm going to look into that more and get a better understanding. I mean, for me, this is a learning process because I first really started doing HEMA through reading books and testing some of the things I saw in pictures. Yeah, you know, do what I saw in pictures on, you know, people that I know were martial artists. And now, I mean, I've joined a gym, been doing it for several months, and I've learned a lot of cool tricks and new techniques. And, you know, I think it's a joy. I mean, you know, I, I said, yeah, I'm not going to do too many stuff with Dark Souls, try to move out from the games, but, I mean, I, I think it's just me trying to find myself and what I want to do for this channel, and so, I mean, if you guys have any suggestions for other weapons or any other topics you might want me to talk about or demonstrate, feel free to tell me, feel free to ask of me, because I'm still a growing channel, and I'm still trying to, like, you know, find what I'm supposed to do, so... Yeah, I'm open for all that. Yeah, sorry if this is just going on and on about this stuff. And, you know, you probably just want to hear about what's going on in the video. But, yeah. Um, yeah, as I said, I really I really like these weapons. I think they're fun. And, you know, it's just, it's just what it is. You know? <laughs> so, just kind of a little mini update while I am swinging at the air wildly. Um, I recently hit 50 subscribers, so I actually made a deal with someone that if I made um, 50 subscribers, that I'm going to have to do a video of me dual-wielding katanas in a similar fashion as the Aramusha and For Honor and also the Unikiri Ubadachi or Nubadachi, whatever you want to call it, from Dark Souls 3, so... I'm going to definitely be working on those videos, as well as, you know, I want to try to do some other things like I used to be a Toho fan like oh my goodness like that series like before I really got into like hardcore souls like soul level one runs and stuff like that I was doing Toho games now those games are just insanely hard and it took me like months 
if not like a year or something, just to get enough like experience and enough confidence to go challenge some of like the extra stage and phantasm stage boss and those like those Toho games. Like if you don't know, they're um Don Maku games or bullet curtain games and it's just kinda like trying to dodge rain. Like that I think that's kind of the meme of those games, but man, I'm probably gonna do some video about just kind of my experience with those games. As well as um I found some of uh these older weapons like I have like this uh three hundred Spartan shield and that three hundred Spartan sword and I just kinda wanna do you know, a little, a little thing with them, because, you know, it's kind of funny, like, I like the movie 300, it's one of my, I don't know, I guess, teenage movies that I really like, but, I mean, the way they fight, it's not very historical, but, you know, I just, I just want to look at kind of how they do stuff, and do a video on that, and, um, you know, I think I probably should do, a another channel introduction, or kind of, like, reinvigorate um, that, because, I, I don't think it's terribly good, like, the lighting's bad, and I'm starting to learn how to do audio, it's like, oh, yeah, I, I think, you know, this whole experience of just kind of being a YouTuber, like, I'm just kind of just new to this, and I'm just trying to, like, learn all these different tricks and tips and what have you, so, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be here, I'm happy to have hit that marker that I've recently reached, and I just definitely want to produce content that the fans would like, so yeah, uh, Oof. What else, what else I want? Oh, oh, I'm probably gonna do some more scientific or natural articles and stuff like that too, because um I, I have the time for that because for um the following week, well for this week I should say um uh I've been doing a lot of career training, so now I'm I'm free to kind of just focus on my content and plan for the future, and um with my career that I'm trying to do, it's um you know um. It's just basically just being a science teacher, so, you know, it's just kind of like, oh my goodness, I I wonder how much time I can put into YouTube when I'm going to be doing that, but, you know, I feel like I'll find my own, I'll find my time, I'll find my rhythm, I'll find my rhyme, just, just go with the flow from there, you know? But yeah, I'm definitely working on trying to, like, talking and hooking up with people, well, not hooking up with people, but like communicating with different um, YouTubers and also asking like content creators, like, you know, their strategies and what they do and how they do stuff. So I'm just trying to just be a genuine and real person. I mean, I guess you can't really say, are you, are you, are you really a genuine and real person? I mean, how do we know this is not a fake? How do we know the real you is not like a complete monster? I mean, yeah. I asked that I asked that question a lot at <laughs> when I when I was talking about like um Soulsborne philosophy I'm like dang some of the, some of these things I I sound pretty edgy and pretty unreal and to be fair like yeah like me like 5 years ago like whew, I, I I don't know like I I look at like I was the dude who played Shadow the Hedgehog that old PS2 at whatever that old game and like I thought that was the best game ever and like I would just quote Shadow the Hedgehog and if if I was around the time when like Star Wars was starting the new era with Kylo Ren and stuff, I'd probably be quoting things like "The darkness guides me." If I was if I was a teenager nowadays, so yeah. But I mean, I think I think I have some edgy moments. Like I have this like cape, and I wear it, and it makes me look like uh, Darth Sidious. And then I start doing things like "Do it" and like electric hands. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a big Star Wars fan, so you know. Yeah, well, when I say Star Wars fan, I mean, I, I personally prefer, like, some of the older stuff, but, I mean, the new stuff, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's whatever, but, I mean, yeah, uh, oh, man, I mean, <laughs> I mean, to be fair, though, I did a Kylo Ren cosplay, um, for a tournament that I was hosting a few weeks back, so, you know, I, I'm, I think I might, Maybe if I feel like posting the footage of some of the matches, it was it was a fun tournament, but really, uh, yeah, it was hard because someone, uh, other people were like cosplaying as like all sorts of things. They're using viable weapons and like just PvP meta weapons, and I'm like, yeah, I had to ditch I had to ditch my cosplay. Well, at least not in armor looks, but in like weaponry because I need to arm myself with something to fight against meta because. Uh, if if you give me a straight sword and a sword, uh, shield, you know, sword and board, I'm perfectly fine in the PvP environment. But if you just give me a great sword or just a, a straight sword, just a little straight sword or great sword, yeah, if you just give me any one of those, 
and by itself, then uh, I'm not going to do too terribly well. And those weapons are really, you really need to have backups for those types of things. But yeah, no, anyway. Yeah, oof, I'm just ranting off topic. I mean, I should be talking about what's in the video and stuff, but I mean, I, I don't have too much to say. I think I already explained most of what I want to say. So, yeah, I just, just, just rambling on, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I just I just stopped using scripts and I'm just talking and whew, maybe I should maybe I should like incorporate scripts I don't I don't know like do you guys like this format better or do you like it when I'm just sounding like ooh you know monotone boring I, I don't know I'm just still trying to learn and improve so I, I, the, any feedback would be helpful but yeah anyway um so we're reaching the end of the video guys so um. Remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're interested, um, comment, and turn on notifications. Do, do whatever you need. I'll, I'll do all that, whatever. But yeah, see you guys with more content in the future. Have a great day. Bye.